Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Law, SOL, Certificate, Certificate in Consumer Protection, CCP, CPI 101 Consumer and Consumer Protection Legislations, Block 1 Consumer, The Basics, Unit 1 Evolution of the Consumer and Consumerism. 1.1 Objectives. After studying this unit, the learner shall be able to Explain consumer rights against exploitation like poor quality or overcharging ETC. Understand the buyer-seller relations in the marketplace. Know as how to avoid restrictive and unfair trade practices. Influence consumer interest in the policy-making process at appropriate levels. Appreciate the cooperation between the government and business houses for consumer protection and propagate consumer education programs. 1.2 Introduction. Consumer protection is a one of the important subjects of discussion across the world because many consumers are not aware about their rights. This fact favors sellers as they misuse the ignorance of the consumers. Sellers want consumers as buyers and not as a complainant. So, the position of the consumer is weak. There is imbalance between the powers of sellers and buyers. Many times the consumer does not get complete and genuine information about the product he wishes to buy. Manufacturers, dealers and traders earn a good margin of profit by deliberately downgrading the quality of the product or by giving misleading information. This has a harmful effect on consumers. A consumer must be aware of his rights, raise his voice against exploitation and seek redressal of his grievances. Due to this, the movement of consumerism is gaining momentum. Consumerism is a social force to make business more honest and responsible towards consumers. Consumerism is also a term used to make consumers aware about their rights, and demands the government to adopt necessary measures in order to protect consumer interest. Reasons for consumerism The major causes for the evolution of consumerism have been identified as Rising prices Prices of goods are rising almost daily. The tendency of profiteering and hoarding has increased among the traders and businessmen. This is affects consumers. Adulteration, duplication and substandard products. Unscrupulous traders indulge in adulteration. They make illegitimate and abnormal profits through adulterated products. Duplicates are made for all types of products like automobile components, medicines, blades, pens, watches, clothes and even currency notes. Substandard products are made using inferior raw materials or by cutting short the required production processes. Thus compromising on quality affecting consumers. Misleading advertisement, misrepresentation of facts, false claims, and cheating occurs while advertising product or service. An advertiser may make a false claims about the usefulness of his product, to lure the consumers to buy them, while the product itself may not be as useful or of inferior quality. Hence, consumers should be protected against deceptive advertisements. After sales service and warranty terms, at the time of sale, the seller gives assurance of good performance of the product. If the product becomes defective, the buyer is not provided any remedy for the defects. Safety and fitness of product. Fitness means that the product quality, durability and suitability of the product is as per the purchase objective of the consumer and is not hazardous or unsafe safe for human consumption. The salesman should assist the buyer in making a useful selection of the product but goods are sold with the prime objective of making a profit, the fitness and safety part is often ignored. Consumer Exploitation Consumer is exploited in numerous ways such as selling substandard products, false advertisement, hoarding and black marketing, adulteration, cheating through contests and prizes etc. Consumerism is the protection of the interests of the buyers of goods and services against defective goods, and in this deal, the consumer is the focal point of the market. Consumer's satisfaction not only benefits business, but also benefits government and society at large. So, it is a collective understanding on the part of consumers, business and government to enhance customers' satisfaction and social welfare which will benefit all of them. 
Consumerism is the economic and social ideology which seeks redress or remedy for dissatisfaction that has arisen while purchasing goods and services. It is a concerted effort of individuals, groups and government to protect consumers from the business practices that infringe consumer rights. Evolution of Consumerism The idea of consumerism was first conceived in the United States of America around the beginning of the 20th century. If we delve into history its evolution can be studied in three distinct phases, which is as follows. 1. Around 1900. The business firms dealing in meat packing were least concerned of their consumers. Meat used to be sold in a very unhealthy and unhygienic manner. This affected the health of consumers. At times, many of the firms used to produce dangerous and unwanted products and drugs and sell them to the consumers by adopting manipulative practices. Conscious and sensible consumers were unhappy with this state of affairs and started a campaign to protect the interests of the consuming public. 2. Around 1930, consumerism assumed importance because people in general became more enlightened and concerned about the standards of good quality products. This was the result of education, awareness, knowledge and political consciousness. Although consumerism did not become a serious public movement during this time, the government came up with a legislation in USA called Miller Teaching Act, 1936 in order to regulate certain marketing malpractices. 3. 1960s It was in the 60s of the 20th century that consumerism became a very forceful social movement. Late President John F. Kennedy, in the year 1962, passed a legislation to protect the rights of consumers, particularly with regard to false advertising and unhealthy packaging of food and other articles. The consumer movement reached its peak when a serious criticism was leveled against the safety of automobile companies which caused death of many people. In his 1962 speech to Congress, President John F. Kennedy outlined four basic consumer rights i.e. the right to safety, the right to be informed, the right to choose, and the right to be heard, which later became known as the Consumer Bill of Rights. In 1985, the United Nations endorsed Kennedy's Consumer Bill of Rights and expanded it to cover eight consumer rights and added four more rights to protect consumers, the right to satisfaction of basic needs, the right to redress, the right to consumer education, and the right to a healthy environment. Thereafter Consumers International adopted these rights as a charter, and started recognizing March 15th as World Consumer Rights Day. This led to the government passing legislations firstly on product safety which compelled automobile companies to adopt safety methods, and secondly also passed other legislations to control pollution. Companies and firms doing business at first criticized the concept of consumerism stating that they had been taking due care with regard to product quality. But later, they started setting up consumer affairs departments to deal with consumer disputes and allegations. Consumerism in India. In India, consumerism has been active for some time now. The major causes of consumerism in India have been identified as rising prices, poor product performance and service quality, product shortages and deceptive advertising and inflation. Government has been very responsive to consumer needs through legislative action. Thus it has become necessary for the consumers to stand up for their rights in order to get their grievances redressed. Origin of consumerism. The majority of consumers in advanced countries are well educated, well informed and are in a position to protect themselves. Also, in these countries adequate production and proper distribution of products exist. But the situation in India is different from the Western world. In India, industries have not achieved that level of adequate production and proper distribution and the existing markets run in shortages, adulteration and black marketing. Also, the Indian people have less money at their disposal. The profit-making attitude of the business owners led to a failure in discharging their social responsibilities i.e. maintaining fair price, providing good quality of goods and services etc. In short, consumerism is an outcome of sufferings and exploitation of consumers, and some businessmen aim to make abnormal profit, 
which is at the cost of consumer safety and health. Although it is generally agreed that, a consumer is the king of the market, but in reality he is not. The majority of problems relating to consumers in India are adulteration, artificial scarcity, and unreasonable prices. Problems of Indian consumers. Indian consumers face several problems such as consumerism is still in its infancy. Being the early years, it is not well organized. Majority of Indian consumers are not aware of their rights. Shortage of essential commodities occurs very often in India. Such imbalances lead to hoarding and black marketing, profiteering and corruption. Many consumers are ignorant and uneducated and in such situations, the marketer exploits the consumer. There are many such cases in India. Producers advertise their products, not with a view to serve the public, but with a view to dispose of their fake, outdated or obsolete products at a good profit. Consumers become easy victims and in the absence of information they buy substandard and defective products. The court procedure in India is time-consuming and a tiresome process. Thus, consumers avoid legal action. The people are unaware of the simple procedures to seek redressal in sectors that have regulators, in addition to the Consumer Protection Act. Supplier, and not the consumer, becomes the king in the marketplace. Consumer Protection Act, 1986 The Consumer Protection Act, 1986 came into existence in India under the leadership of late Sri Rajiv Gandhi. This act is a landmark in the history of consumer movement in the country. Before passing the act, the government circulated a draft of Consumer Protection Bill, and various consumer groups had provided inputs. The act did not differentiate between consumers of private organizations and public entities. The late Mr. Rajiv Gandhi ignored the strong reservations expressed by the public sector organizations on their inclusion in the legislation drafted. Thus, the Consumer Protection Act that was enacted was applicable to all for the protection of consumers of private as well as public sector organizations. The Consumer Protection Act provides for three-tier quasi-judiciary machinery for grievance redressal at the national, state and district level. The Act has prescribed six consumer rights i.e. right to safety, right to choose, right to seek information, right to be heard, right to seek redressal and right to consumer education. Consumer rights are designed to ensure that a consumer is protected from being cheated by manufacturers or service providers. It also ensures fair trade practices and flow of truthful information about product and services. The consumer can file his, her complaint at the appropriate level for quick redressal at the district, state or national level, depending on the consideration value of the disputed product or service. A complaint involving a consideration value up to us. 20 lakhs, is accepted by district consumer redressal form. Cases which involve a consideration amount of Rs. 20 lakhs to Rs. 1 crore is accepted at State Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission and cases beyond Rs. 1 crore are accepted at National Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission. The complaint may relate to a defective refrigerator or a mobile handset, non-functional telephone line or instrument, delay in getting an insurance claim, negligence in medical treatment and so on. It can be filed against the manufacturer, selling organization or the person who provides the goods and services for a price. Any service or product given free of change is not covered by the Act. The Consumer Protection Act, 1986, applies to all goods and services, excluding goods for resale or for commercial purpose and services rendered free of cost and under a contract of personal service. The provisions of Act are compensatory in nature. Check your progress 1. 1. Discuss the major causes for the evolution of consumerism. 2. Discuss the problems faced by Indian consumers. 1.3 Meaning of consumer and consumerism. The term consumerism was first used in 1915 to refer to advocacy of the rights and interests of consumers, Oxford English Dictionary. Now it is termed as the protection or promotion of interests of consumers. The growth of consumerism has led many organization s to improve their service to customers. The Cambridge Dictionary defines consumerism as a state of an advanced industrial society in which a lot of goods are bought and sold. A consumer is a person who acquires goods or service for use or consumption and pays for it. Any individual is a consumer.
The moment a person comes into this world, he starts consuming. He needs clothes, milk, soap, water and many more things and these needs continues throughout his life. Thus, we all are consumers. In the Consumer Protection Act, 1986, a consumer is defined under Section 2, D, as buys any goods for a consideration which has been already paid or promised to be paid or is partly paid and partly promised, or under any system of deferred payment, and includes any user of such goods other than the person who buys such goods for consideration paid or promised or partly paid or partly promised, or under any system of deferred payment when such use is made with the approval of such person, but does not include a person who obtains such goods for resale or for any commercial purpose, or hires or avails of any services for a consideration which has been paid or promised to be paid or partly paid and partly promised, or under any system of deferred payment, and includes any beneficiary of such services other than the person who hires or avails of the services for a consideration paid or promised, or partly paid and partly promised, or under any system of deferred payment, when such services are availed of with the approval of the first mentioned person. For the purposes of the subclause, 1. Commercial purpose, does not include use by a consumer of goods bought and used by him exclusively for the purpose of earning his livelihood, by means of self-employment. In common sense, any individual who buys a product or service for his personal use and not for manufacturing or resale purposes, is called a consumer. A consumer is someone who acquires goods or services for direct use or ownership and not for resale or use in production and manufacturing. Consumerism is an organized way to protect consumers from company polices and products that violate consumer rights, whereas as consumer means somebody who buys a product or service from a company by paying a consideration. Consumer is a person who consumes the goods or services. On the other hand, consumerism is a policy of protecting and informing consumers through truthful information and improved safety standards which increases consumption and is beneficial to the nation in the long run. 1.4 WHO is not a consumer? A person is not a consumer if he buys goods for resale or for commercial purposes or he avails services or goods free of charge, or he takes a personal service. Consideration is vital in the acquisition of goods or services. Anything bought or taken without consideration does not constitute a consumer business relationship. Secondly, if something is bought with an intention to make a profit by reselling it or by using it for commercial purposes, that buyer is also not termed a consumer. Thirdly, if a person takes personal service from an individual who is not engaged in the business is also not a consumer. For example, if a mother cooks food for her family, in that case family is not a consumer. There are some leading judgments of the Supreme Court of India, which specify that user of statutory services is not a consumer even if he is paying fee or charges. In the case of Bihar Secondary School Examination and Maharshi Dayanand University, clarification was given by Supreme Court of India, that Bowdoin University is not a service provider. It states that, when the examination board or university conducts an examination, in the discharge of its statutory functions, it does not offer its services to any candidate. Nor does a student who participates in the examination conducted by the board, hires or avails of any service from the board for a consideration. On the other hand, a candidate who participates in the examination conducted by the board, is a person who has undergone a course of study and who requests the board to test him as to whether he has imbibed sufficient knowledge to be fit to be declared as having successfully completed the said course of education, and if so, determine his position or rank or competence with or with other examinees. The process is not therefore availment of a service by a student, but participation in a general examination conducted by the board to ascertain whether he is eligible and fit to be considered as having successfully completed the secondary education course. The examination fee paid by the student is not the consideration for availment of any service, but the charge paid for the privilege of participation in the examination. The discharge of a statutory function of examining whether a candidate is fit to be declared as having successfully completed a course by passing the examination. 
The fact is that, in the course of the conduct of the examination, or evaluation of answer scripts, or furnishing of mark sheets or certificates, there may be some negligence, omission or deficiency, and this does not convert the board into a service provider for a consideration, nor convert the examinee into a consumer who can make a complaint under the Act. The board is not a service provider, and a student who takes an examination is not a consumer, and consequently, any complaint under the Act will not be maintainable against the board. In case of right to application, a bench of the National Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission, NCDRC, presided by Justice Ajit Bharihok, Justice V.K. Jan and Dr. B.C. Gupta has ruled that, no complaint by a person alleging deficiency in services rendered by the CPIO, PO is maintainable before a consumer forum. The bench has held that the RTI Act is a complete code in itself ousting the jurisdiction of civil courts. The net impact of the order is that a person seeking information under the RTI Act cannot seek compensation for deficiency in services under the CPA. 1.5 Consumer Protection in a Historical Perspective In ancient India, all sections of society followed, dharma, which laid out social rules and norms, and it served as the guiding principle governing human relations. The principles of dharma were derived from Vedas. Vedas were considered the words of God, thus, Vedas were the primary sources of law in India. Among the dharmas, Manu Smriti, was the most influential. Manu, the ancient lawgiver, also wrote about ethical trade practices. He prescribed a code of conduct for traders and specified punishments to those who committed certain crimes against buyers. For example, he referred to the problem of adulteration and said, one commodity mixed with another must not be sold, as pure, nor a bad one, as good, not less. Then the property quantity or weight, nor anything that is at hand are that is concealed. The punishment, for adulterating unadulterated commodities and for breaking gems or for improperly boring, them, was the least harsh. Severe punishment was prescribed for fraud in selling seed corn, he who sells, for seed corn that which is, not seed corn, he who takes up seed, already sown, and he who destroys a boundary, mark, shall be punished by mutilation. In ancient times, the king had the power to confiscate the entire property of a trader in two situations. When the king had a monopoly over the exported goods. When the export of the goods was forbidden. There was also a mechanism to control prices and punish wrongdoers. The king fixed the rates for the purchase and sale of all marketable goods. Manu said, man who behaves dishonestly to honest customers or cheats in his prices shall be fined. There was a process to inspect all weights and measures every six months, and the results of these inspections were duly noted. All these measures show how effective ancient society was in regulating the many wrongdoings of the marketplace. These measures also show how developed the system was in identifying the market strategies of traders. Thus, Manusmriti effectively dealt with various consumer matters, many of which remain of great concern in modern legal systems. According to Kautilya, the trade guilds were prohibited from taking recourse to black marketing and unfair trade practice. Severe punishments were prescribed for different types of cheating. For example, for cheating with false cowrie shells, dice, leather straps, ivory cubes or by sleight of hand, the punishment shall be, cutting off of one hand. Or a fine. Th rights of the traders were also well protected. Kautilya said, on the subject of the return of an article purchased or payment of price thereof, there was fixed rule of time, after which an article could not be returned. During Chandra Gupta's period, good trade practices were prevalent. For example, goods could not be sold at the place of their origin, field or factory. They were to be carried to the appointed markets, Panya Sala, where the dealer had to declare particulars as to the quantity, quality and the prices of his goods which were examined and registered. In the books, Eve Y. Trader was required to take a license to sell. A trader from outside had to obtain permission. The superintendent of commerce fixed the wholesale prices of goods as they entered the customs house. He allowed a margin of profit to fix retail prices. 
speculation and cornering to influence prices were prohibited. Thus, the state bore a heavy responsibility for protecting the public against unfair prices and fraudulent transactions. There were severe punishments for smuggling and adulteration of goods. Also during Chandra Gupta's period, easy access to justice for all, including consumers, was considered of great importance. The king was the central power to render justice. During Muslim rule, a large number of units of weights were used in India. During the Sultanate period, the prices used were determined by local conditions. During the rule of Alauddin Khalji, 37 strict controls were established in the marketplace. In those days, there was an unending supply of grain to the city and grain carriers sold at prices. Fixed by the Sultan. There was a mechanism for price enforcement in the market. Similarly, shopkeepers were punished for underweighing their goods. During the British regime, the Sale of Goods Act of 1930 was the exclusive source of consumer protection in India. It is also known as the Consumer's Charter. The main protection for the buyer against the seller for defective goods is found in Section 16 of the Act. It provides exceptions to the principle of caveat emptor, let the buyer beware, and the interests of the buyer are sufficiently safeguarded. Phrases such as, skill and judgment, of the seller, reliance on seller's skill, and the test of, merchantable quality, provide effective remedies to buyers. Courts interpreted these rules in the consumer's favor. The Sale of Goods Act was the exclusive consumer legislation until 1986, with the passage of the Consumer Protection Act of 1986, designed to supplement the remedies already provided under the Sale of Goods Act. Consumer protection was also provided within India's criminal justice system. The Indian Penal Code of 1860 has a number of provisions to deal with crimes against consumers. It deals with offences related to the use of false weights and measures, the sale of adulterated food or drinks, the sale of harmful food or drink, and the sale of adulterated drugs. 1.6 Industrial Revolution With the Industrial Revolution, a great change came in the field of consumerism. In the 19th century, capitalist development and the Industrial Revolution were primarily focused on the capital goods sector and industrial infrastructure i.e., mining, steel, oil, transportation networks, communications networks, industrial cities, financial centers, etc. At that time, agricultural commodities, essential consumer goods, and commercial activities had developed to an extent, but not to the same extent as other sectors. The Industrial Revolution created a situation where goods were available in huge quantities at low prices and for everyone. This was an era of mass consumption, where the concept of consumerism is applicable. 1.6.1 Consumerism India is a vast country. A large number of its population is illiterate, ignorant and misinformed. These factors make consumer movement difficult in the age of large-scale production and availability of a vast variety of goods, and there is a need to guide the users or buyers of products and services. Consumerism protects the consumer against inferior and dangerous goods, misleading information and unfair trade practices. It is an organized effort of the government and consumer organization s to strengthen the rights of consumers and to balance the powers of seller and buyer. Consumerism is important because it creates jobs. If people stop buying things, then employees would be laid off. Consumerism keeps the economy balanced. It is a process of earning more to satisfy the wants, needs and comfort of its vast population. 1.6.2 Consumer in the Modern Age Every market in India presents an opportunity to marketers to get consumers to move up the social level. As technology improves and consumers' disposable income increases, consumers have the willingness and propensity to take leaps from the unbranded to a branded product. Consumer products that were considered for a select group of people are now reaching out to a larger number of consumers, from collars to shampoos to ready-made garments to mobile handsets to airline travel. Product categories that started their business in the 1990s began to expand their footprint and became a part of the life of the masses. Emulation is a major component in modern age consumerism. 
consumers seek to emulate those who are above them in social status. The poor segments aspire to be like the wealthy and the wealthy segment imitates the celebrities. Consumerism gives the option of purchasing and trying new products and services without thinking much about its benefits, durability and consequences thereafter. That is the reason as to why a huge amount is spent on advertising. Celebrities are endorsing products, creating a demand and influencing consumers to buy and try more and more new things. However, consumer awareness is still low. There is a lack of consumer education, honest information source, price control mechanism and effective judiciary machinery. Social inequity continues to be part of India's economic scenario, and the sectors that were opened up for few have now percolated to many. Consumerism is truly a mass. 1.6. 3. Consumer in Market, Economy The role of consumers is important in any economy because they create the demand for products and services and while doing this, they create jobs for others who make these desired products and services. The role of a consumer is significant because he is a person who can make a decision whether or not to purchase any item. He is the one who is influenced by marketing and advertising. Basically, without consumers, there would be no economic system. In a market economy, consumers create economic decisions for the marketplace. Individual consumers take decisions on what to buy based on what is best for them. There is a lot of competition in a market economy because producers want consumers to buy their products rather than competitors' products. The producer estimates the demand of the consumer and then the consumer decides and makes his choice. Alternatively, if consumers stop buying or they decide to spend less on a product, prices will drop or it may also force the product to be out of the market as there is less or no demand of the product. On the other hand, if consumers start demanding more, the price will increase and at a later stage the supply will be increased to meet demand. Consumer spending signifies the demand of the products sold in the market and also the market price of product and services. Spending money is an important role of consumers. This is an indicator of consumer confidence in the market economy. On the basis of their purchasing power and confidence shown for a particular product or services, the businessman and government takes decisions. The perceptions of consumer are studies and an analysis of which determine the allocation and distribution of resources. It also helps companies to decide on which product is valued most in the market. This information is used to find consumer needs and develop new products. Check your progress 5. 1. Discuss the role of consumer in a market economy. 1.7 Emergence of Consumer Movement Consumer movement is a silent revolution which is steadily gaining momentum. Developments are taking place at an accelerated pace in the field of consumer awareness and education. Some considerable changes are taking place amongst business organizations towards consumers' interests. The first organization, Consumer Guidance Society of India, was started by nine housewives in erstwhile Bombay, the present-day Mumbai. The aim was to inform and educate consumers on protecting their consumer rights. The other powerful consumer organization in India that was established was the Consumer Education and Research Center, CERC, founded in 1978 in Ahmedabad as part of the social action litigation movement. At that time, Courts started recognizing social workers and public interest groups as consultants on behalf of individuals or class of people whose rights had been violated but who could not easily speak for themselves. The Consumer Protection Act, 1986 was passed, to provide better protection of consumer interest and for the purpose, to make provision for the establishment of consumer councils and other authorities for the settlement of consumer disputes and for matters connected therewith. The Act ensures the protection of various consumers' rights, redressal of consumer grievances at national, state and district level. It also provides simple, speedy and inexpensive redressal for the grievances of consumers and for promoting a strong and grassroots-based voluntary consumer movement in the country. With the focus on empowering consumers, the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Government of India has been implementing an intensive program, Jago Grahak Jago, to create consumer awareness in the country. 
This includes multimedia campaigns through the electronic and print media covering the entire country. Under this program, the ministry has established the National Consumer Helpline, NCH, in the year 2005 to help consumers in addressing their grievances through appropriate advice and guidance. The Jago Grahak Jago advertisements carry the National Consumer Helpline toll-free number, which empowers consumers from all over the country. An aggrieved consumer has only to dial the toll-free number 1-800-11-4000 to seek advice and guidance. Jago Grahak Jago program Launched in 2005 has as its main objective to educate people about their rights as a consumer. It targets the rural and remote areas where people are ignorant about consumer rights. It is one of the very successful campaigns undertaken by the government. It has now become a household name. People can seek information about consumer rights and even complain against the violation of their rights by any manufacturer or service provider. The government celebrates December 24 as National Consumer Day, since the Consumer Protection Act, 1986, was enacted on this day with the objective of providing, inexpensive, simple and quick justice, to consumers. 1.8 Summary Any individual who purchases any product or service for his personal use and not for manufacturing or resale is called a consumer. Every time someone goes to a store and buys a shirt, toy, beverage or anything else, they make a decision as a consumer. The term consumer refers to any person who purchases goods for a consideration that has been either paid up fully or partially or is promised to pay. The person who is using the goods with the approval of buyer is also considered as consumer. But, if someone has bought any product for resale or for commercial purposes, he is not a consumer. The payment is important, anything which is acquired free of cost does not comes under the purview of the Consumer Protection Act. Indian consumers are exploited by sellers at the marketplace many times. Many of the consumers in India are illiterate and are living below the poverty line who becomes a victim at the hands of traders. The consumers who are poor suffer the most from frauds, excessive prices, exorbitant credit charges, poor quality of merchandise and service. Protection of consumer is not a new concept. From time immemorial Indian consumers were protected through various scripts written in ancient India. It is found in Manusmriti and in Kautalya's Athashastra, the basic law of ancient India and the same was strengthened with provisions to protect consumers in the present laws enacted. Consumerism is categorized in two ways. First, as a social and economic order that is based on the systematic creation and fostering of a desire to purchase goods or services in greater amounts, and second, as a social movement that creates awareness for consumer rights and protects consumers through fair trade practices. Consumer protection laws are government regulations which aim to protect the rights of consumers. The laws are designed to prevent businesses that engage in fraud or specified unfair practices from gaining an advantage over competitors and may provide additional protection for the weak and those unable to take care of themselves. The concept of consumer protection has ancient and historical roots in India. The pre-independence and the post-independence legislations have merely paved the way for the creation of a legislation solely dedicated to consumer protection. The Consumer Protection Act, 1986 and the various amendments thereafter has ensured that the consumer is protected against the exploitative market, competition and profiteering techniques that are usually practiced by producers of goods and services. The Act protects consumer rights and provides for setting up quasi-judicial authorities for redressal of consumer disputes. This Act takes justice in the socio-economic sphere step closer to the common man. Thank you, subscribe to our channel for more updates, and we will see you with the next chapter.